BYD, the largest automaker in China, has issued a patriotic rallying call for the country's automotive industry to band together and phase out legacy automakers. The significance of this call to action for the Chinese people was of great impact, especially seeing a Chinese brand achieve success on a worldwide scale to the point of threatening automakers who have been in the game for years. This call, which originates from Tesla's primary competitor in the worldwide market for electric vehicles, has earned significant applause, highlighting the intense competition and pursuit of overseas growth among China's manufacturers. Can Chinese automakers really destroy the legacy automakers? It should come as no surprise that China's automobile industry is experiencing a boom at the moment. Geely is now the brains behind legacy firms like Volvo and Lotus. BYD is poised to take over Ford's old factory in Brazil to enhance production. And Neo is out here making electric vehicles with swappable batteries a reality. Now, automotive manufacturers in the country want to ride this wave of momentum and squash legacy automakers like BMW and Mercedes. During an event celebrating a big production milestone for BYD, the company showed a video detailing China's automotive sector's progression. The video began with the state-owned manufacturer FAW Group and moved on to more recent participants like Xpeng, NIO, and Li Auto. The video highlighted solidarity among Chinese automakers to demolish the old legends and achieve new world-class brands, aiming to promote the notion of Chinese autos. This call received strong feedback from many in the industry and on social media, and some automakers have voiced their concerns about potential regulatory risks for Chinese brands, particularly in international markets such as Europe, where Chinese electric vehicle exports may be subject to anti-dumping scrutiny. Wang Wanli, chief technology officer of Great Wall Motor, responded to the message of unity with a plea to accept the reality of competition. He suggested facing obstacles head-on may be more productive than pursuing unity while harboring grievances. This reply exemplifies the complicated dynamics within the Chinese automotive sector, characterized by the intersection of rivalry, regulatory worries, and market expansion goals. BYD's dominance in China's new energy industry, which includes plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles, has strengthened, with the company achieving a market share of 37% in the first seven months of this year, which is an increase from their market share of 29% at the same period of the previous year. The success of BYD has even led to the brand's overall sales surpassing those of Volkswagen, highlighting the company's dominance within the Chinese automobile market. The current difficulties that the industry has been experiencing, such as a price war that was started by Tesla and competitiveness in worldwide markets, have made BYD's demand for unity and success in global markets an essential topic, which has sparked both support and concerns among China's automakers. The industry's ongoing difficulties and aspirations largely determine the Chinese automobile market's trajectory into the future. However, the Chinese automaker is becoming increasingly competitive, forcing many legacy automakers to exit the market sooner rather than later. Within the last three months, international automakers saw their market share drop from 61% to 58%. This marked a significant decrease from the previous year. Bloomberg anticipates that these manufacturers' total share for this year will be significantly less than 50%. However, the market should have a minor rebound during the last half of this year because they will be clearing off old inventory. When it comes to how well legacy automakers have done throughout the years, the story varies from one automaker to another. While Toyota's sales have remained relatively stable in China over the past few years, those of its Japanese competitors, Nissan and Honda, have suffered a significant decline during the same period. Historically speaking, premium manufacturers have performed significantly better than mass market ones. The growing popularity of electric vehicles is a significant factor that's upsetting the established order of the automotive industry. Because of the length of the product planning cycles in the automotive industry, many traditional manufacturers underestimated how quickly the Chinese market was transitioning to electric vehicles. International legacy manufacturers had just 8% of China's plug-in automotive market in the last quarter of last year and many of their electric vehicle options could not compete with local ones in terms of price, range, and features. Their market share in China's EV industry has been rapidly decreasing ever since companies like BYD and Tesla took the lead and a slew of Chinese manufacturers released an onslaught of electric vehicle models. It's possible that this will result in legacy automakers suffering significant losses in market share until they can quickly correct their trajectory. The preliminary sales information for 2023 demonstrate that this is probably already taking place in the market. In January and February, German manufacturers experienced a decline of 21%, while Japanese manufacturers experienced a decline of 39%.
In contrast, BYD sold more than 300,000 autos during that period, representing an increase of more than 70%. And recently, the company's founder, Wang Chuanfu, made public their aspiration to become China's highest-selling automaker by the end of this year. Connectivity options within the vehicles and software packages offered by Chinese manufacturers tend to be superior, which is one of the ways in which they differentiate themselves from their competitors. Automakers in China have a propensity to adopt new technology sooner than Western countries, which has enticed people all over the world. Until very recently, global automakers were forced to supply autos with local joint venture partners. However, this was changed. This change aimed to speed up the transfer of technology and manufacturing know-how that has existed for quite some time. The advent of electrification opened up a new door of opportunity for Chinese automakers who now fully utilize this opportunity. Ford has already disclosed that its electric vehicle department is projected to lose $4.5 billion this year which is $1.5 billion higher than was initially anticipated. Until now, Ford CFO John Lawler cannot disclose an exact date for when the company plans to start producing the promised 2 million electric vehicles annually. President Luis da Silva, more commonly referred to by his nickname Lula, has lofty goals for Brazil's manufacturing sector, and the reopening of an old Ford facility could have been a symbol of these goals. However, President Lula is attempting to position China as the nation's primary source of financial support by suffocating Ford and giving BYD a chance. The United States has long fulfilled this job in emerging economies such as Brazil. Nevertheless, the country is now threatened with a humiliating lack of influence worldwide. China invests in electric vehicles in Chile, Argentina, and Brazil. China also mines lithium in Africa and established smelters and battery plants in Indonesia. The right-wing nationalist Bolsonaro, Lula's predecessor, brought relations with China to an all-time low during his time in office. However, Lula went to see Xi Jinping, the president of China, in March, just a little over two months after he took office, hoping to establish a detente. Lula considers Beijing to be in a position to assist in ways Washington is either unable or unwilling to do so. Since there is a possibility that members of Congress in the United States will oppose providing direct aid to other countries, the federal government's only tools for encouraging private companies to invest are job owning and various tax and trade policies. On the other hand, China maintains tight control over its private companies, exercising management to facilitate an easier alignment of the decisions made by these companies with China's national interests. After meeting with Lula, she made good on his promise to assist by signing funding commitments worth $10 billion. American officers raised concerns regarding Lula's lack of a critical stance towards Xi, and in May, the United States sent its ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, to Brazil to repair the damaged relationship between the two countries. The following month, Lula met with Stella Lee, the international vice president of BYD. Even General Motors is having difficulties with electric vehicles right now. Reuters claim that GM CFO Paul Jacobson indicated at an investor conference that the company's electric vehicle manufacturing had been slowed down due to production challenges of its new Ultium battery packs. GM shares dropped by about 6% the following day, reaching their lowest level in more than two months due to the warning about the batteries. Only 50,000 electric vehicles were produced by GM between January and June, and the vast majority of those vehicles used an older battery pack. So far this year, GM needs to catch up to its output goals. The most recent battery hiccup will, for the most part, affect the production of the Cadillac Lyric. So, do traditional manufacturers stand a chance to compete against Chinese manufacturers? Since China accounted for almost two-thirds of worldwide EV sales in 2022, this development has taken a back of several legacy automakers, particularly Toyota and Volkswagen, the two largest automobile manufacturers worldwide. They've both sounded the alarm. Everything has been very fast, as I'm sure you'll agree. The industry's response, which is understandable, has been mixed and includes both praise and condemnation. Some people said that the BYD message made them feel proud to be Chinese, while others expressed concern that it would lead to additional regulatory concerns and scrutiny for Chinese automakers worldwide. But what do you think? Given the rate at which firms like BYD and NIO are expanding, is it possible that they may one day outsell Ford and GM in the United States? Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Subscribe, like, and don't forget to share. See you in the next one.